deserts are areas characterized by a deficiency of water as a result of low rainfall and consequently are able to support little vegetation. Ungulates, which are any mammals that have hooves, are by nature herbivores and depend on all sorts of vegetation to survive, not only as a primary food source, but also as a vital source of moisture. Ungulates that live in a desert have had to adopt various strategies in order to survive. Springboks are typically a species of arid regions and tend to stay in the dry riverbeds where their preferred grass is more abundant. Temperature has a direct influence on the amount of springbok drinks, but they can utilize highly mineralized water undrinkable to most other species. They can exist without water provided they get enough moisture from the plants they eat. Chemspok are natural desert dwellers. Much the same as a car's radiator, the blood which supplies the Chemspok's brain is cooled by the blood returning from the white facial area above the nasal passages. Not only are a Chemspok's kidneys capable of handling brackish water, but they can moderate their breathing to reduce the loss of moisture in their lungs. Amazingly, by controlling their body temperature, the Chemspok can get past the hottest time of day without sweating to cool down and therefore not have any moisture loss. Further north, in the Negev Desert, is another species of Chemspok, more commonly known as the Oryx. Like the Chemspok, this scimitar-horned Oryx can get all the water it needs from its food and its lighter pigment is a lot more desert-friendly. In the extreme heat, when the Oryx's body exceeds 41 degrees Celsius, it begins panting to reduce body temperature. For these addicts, obtaining and conserving water are top priorities. Desert animals practice a tight water economy, collecting water wherever they can and minimizing loss wherever possible. For drinkers and non-drinkers alike, water has to be eked out to make sure it lasts and compared with animals from other habitats, desert species lose very little moisture in their urine and droppings. The Somali wild ass is a desert survivor and it was due to this hardiness that ancient civilizations utilized them for heavy duty work. Wild asses are the predecessors of our more domestic donkey. Desert animals often have highly variable breeding seasons. Instead of reproducing at a fixed time of the year, many produce young when there is the best chance of finding food. This flexible system is an efficient way of using available resources because it prevents parents having to tend hungry youngsters when they are hungry themselves. Deserts are places of extremes. Besides being dry, they experience intense sunshine and a greater daily temperature range than any other habitat. For ungulates to survive, they must be able to adapt from below freezing temperatures at night to intense heat in the day. The dainty clipspringer thrives among the desert rocks. It can withstand astonishing temperature fluctuations from 42 degrees Celsius in the shade to less than zero Clip springers are nimble, but in addition to their sure-footedness on rocks, they have a hidden weapon against temperature swings. Their fur has hollow hairs. These hairs insulate their bodies, so when outside temperatures soar or plummet, their own remains unchanged. Clip springers do not need to drink water at all and are found in areas where water is scarce. Like the clipspringer, ungulates that have been forced to live in the Earth's harshest regions have an evolutionary choice, adapt or die. <laughs>